Welcome to the football tonight. We'll fasten your seatbelt and settle back for the next hour and a half. Some magnificent action. The matches tonight are Richmond against Fitzroy and at the MCG, the game between Collingwood and Geelong. Well, we have to lead with trumps. The game at headquarters, 66,000 people there. It was better than most finals, you see. A sensational game at the MCG. This was the position of the game to half time. Absolutely nothing in it. With Collingwood having led by four points at quarter time, they lead by eight points at half time. I might add that the position on the ladder behind the two runaway leaders, the West Coast Eagles and Carlton, had seven teams level on 11 wins from third to ninth on the ladder. These were two of them. They were playing for a place in the finals, everything hinging on it, and was absolutely fantastic. We're going to pick up the replay. Uh, we're uh, uh, just under five minutes to go in the third quarter, and with me in the commentary box are Dennis Cometti and Don Scott, and at this stage, Collingwood leading by 11 points. Darcy to bring it in. Geelong have won three out of eight when they trail at halftime this season. Here's Handley. What's their record when they lead? None out of a hundred. Well, I guess the remaining... Oh, he's gone. He's Mansfield's gone. in trouble. I thought he was gone. Well, Russell applied a tackle. Now, watch this. There's the... Look. Should it not be 50? If, in fact, he hadn't gone. Mockhorst has got it on the outer side. Buckley, she's been dangerous today. From 60 metres out, he heads for home. Colbert right on the line, touched it. Wow, this is a terrific quarter. And the way the crowd rose when that ball was heading to the goal line, it was absolutely fantastic. The moment of excitement when Colbert's fist got up there and the disappointment from the Collingwood fans when the fist reached the ball. 77 to 65, two straight kicks in front, the pies. Hinkley short passing, and still on the 50 is Mansfield. He did it again, he got away. Backs himself against Woods. They play an attacking style, any place on the ground, Geelong. Kelly missed it, Brewer, oh, brought to a full stop. Clever oh, tap out to Brownless, Brownless will kick a goal. That was brilliant. You summed it up succinctly, Drew, it was brilliant. And then the way Brownless held that ball as he shot for goal. Excellent once again. This is a terrific game. That's his fourth build. But wasn't he? Oh, uh, Mansfield nearly got pinged before, and he did exactly the same thing again, breaking away. As Brewer coming through. Well done. See that by Tudor? Now watch the way Brownless holds the ball across the body so he can go right to left, or left to right. Collingwood by six points. Bairstow out of the middle, so they win in the centre again, Geelong, but the defensive mark is held by Watson. Plays on to Kelly. Little chip across the ground, Sharkey. Up from the back pocket. Sharkey goes very wide. Francis. Francis wants to go. It's around Tanner. Kicks to the wing. They've used the ball very well coming out this time. This is Brown. Brown is centre half forward. Buckley under the ball. Mansfield dropped it. Was tackled. Didn't have it. Got it across to support. Handley. Bairstow's on the ground. Scrambled out of there by Handley, but it's going to be a free kick to Mark Bairstow. Not sure why. What did he indicate? High, perhaps, the tackle. Well, he's sitting down. When so. you're sitting on the ground, you've got half a chance of tackling it high. <laughs> so Mark Bairstow has had a bit of quarter here. Pretty quiet early. He's at centre half back. His side is down by six points. Goes looking for Couch. Juggled attempt at the mark. Couch will come back into it. So too did Woods. He's had a very good turn. Got it across to Watson. Watson kicks it out wide. Taken by Russell. Shrugs a tackle. Gives it to McGuad. And once again, he sets the crowd alight with a run around the outer side. A couple of bounces. Kicks inside the 50. Darcy got a fist on it. Straight to Williams. Williams snaps. It's very close. He's missed. He snaffles those Williams. Oh. Onto it like lightning. Lee Matthews and Stan Magro in the coach's box. And uh, John Ballantyne sitting alongside Lee Matthews. Interesting uh, knee reconstruction earlier in the year, and they reckon he might even be a chance to play if the Pies make the finals. He's been training. There he is in the white shirt. Former Footscray defender. And he... Uh, 
Well, full straight forward, he became a long list of casualties for Collingwood fullbacks earlier in the season. At the back of the pack, Hinkley sweeps a hand pass up to Colvin. Wills giving him run off the last line of defence. The kick by Wills, a wobbler. Dropping in short, it bounces through the pack. Chance for Ablett. Free kick to Francisco. Seven point lead to Collingwood, and we've got just over two minutes of three quarter time. Shark, you should have punched that ball back before, and the run has gone straight out to him. Could have gone forward for Collingwood had he have punched it back. Kelly gave it to Francis, who looks for Buckley, finds the ball on the ground, the hand pass. Just by Russell, taken by Tanner. Besto goes over the top. This is Lynch around the other side. Forward of the wing, he finds Tudor. Tudor's down towards right half forward. Little chip pass across the ground. Hocking has gone out of the game in this term. He started brilliantly. He's about 55 metres from goal. Goes looking for Ablett. In front was Mench. Ablett behind, juggles the mark. Well, like 10 pin bowling, all the pins in front of him went down. And Ablett somehow came up brandishing the mark. Did Mench touch it like the Collingwood defenders did in the previous quarter? Just watch this. No. Uh -oh. So Gary Ablett, very important kick here. The margin seven points. This to pull it back to one. Going at his third goal. The goal umpire goes a long way. Three, Gary Ablett. He has had better games. Maybe a little fortune on that occasion. You've got to have a little bit of luck in football. Under a minute to go to the last change. A point the difference. McGuan out of the middle for the Pies. Going wide to right half forward. Williams trying to hook it back to Francis. McGuan again, inside 50, out he goes to Russell, and Russell kicks the goal! Well, they, they bounced it with 56 seconds left, so it took 22 seconds to get the goal. And interesting, if we could get a shot of the next bounce down and the ball up the centre, the st we start, they're not really marking up by the side of the, both teams. There was one pair on the Geelong player, Collingwood player, and one another, yet the others were pretty loose. It was McGuan and Hocking together. Again, they're pretty loose. Have a look at that. There's, not, there's the two that are together on the left of the screen. Handley goes up, knocked it down. Right, could have been taken high, no free kick. He scrambles it out wide. Lynch has got the run of it. We're down to about 22 seconds. Lynch tries to knock it on. Right standing alongside the pack, couldn't control it. Brewer spins out of the tackle. Still he goes, Brewer well played. We're down to 12 seconds. Brewer long, Ablett. Oh! And Ablett has taken this mark. He pushed off Francisca. And now he should put his fourth. Not kidding, this will be the third goal in the last minute. Just a marvellous quarter. One of the corners of the season, this. Ablett looking at his third goal of the term. And this is his stock in trade, Ablett. He likes this. He'd be a better player if he moved around. Siren's gone, so Ablett will kick after the siren. And he puts it through. Three goals in the quarter for Gary Ablett. And the margin is back to a point at three-quarter time. Collingwood lead it. 12-12 to 13-5. It's a cracker. Big race. Finished to the third quarter at the MCG with three goals in a minute and the Magpies had a one-point lead at the last change, 12-12 to 13 goals five. Well, if the excitement was high then, it was about to get higher. We take you to the last quarter. About 15 minutes remain. Geelong have added a point and the scores are level. 84 apiece. Everything to play for. The winner should make an appearance in the finals. The loser, well, it's so tight. They've got to win their last couple, and the ball's out of bounds on the other side. It's a pity because these two teams are the form teams at the moment, but then again, they muffed a lot of chances on their way through the season, especially Geelong. 
Barnes and Monkhorst, it falls in front, taken by Francis, hurried kick away, Hinkley reaches over the top, almost the mark, now that will be holding the ball, oh. gee, he was stiff, oh. he was very, very unlucky. Yeah, my word. Here's Hassel, an unfay on unlucky though in the AFL, Francis to Hassel, slick hands, Buckley over the top, McGuan did well, showed a lot of courage, could have been bumped in the back, Brown's got it, away to Russell in space, he goes from 35 metres out, he's off target, behind. Scott Russell has been lively this afternoon, good to see him back, he missed last week, it was Mick McGuan, he missed the last Geelong game, Scotty Russell. He's been effective on the forward line without being spectacular. One goal, three, Russell. Yeah, six kicks, one goal, three, but he's had ten hand passes as well. Playing forward, pocket or half forward. Kick by Simpson to centre wing. Brewer went in. And his hocking left it for him. The kick up short of half forward. Tanner. Oh. Tablet dragged down by Kelly. Well, actually, I think the hand just went there, and Ablett used a little bit of the old Bob Johnson acting. These, these two have had some fun over the last couple of years. Ablett was reported for an incident with Pert, and earlier this season, Ablett took the mark of the century over Gary Pert. They still dis dispute whether it was a mark or not. And now, here he goes for goal, Gary Ablett. And he's not kicking like a man who's kicked 100 goals in a season. It comes back into the field of play. A snap by Tudor. A goal! Lee Tudor involved in a brilliant passage of play in the third quarter. When he hit the ball, when the Geelong were going to the other end of the ground, across to Brownless, and Brownless held the ball across his body for a goal. This time he kicks his own goal. He came off the bench in the third quarter. Former North Melbourne wingman, now with Geelong. Centre breaks Geelong's way, 18 to 10. They almost got away again, but Woods sends Collingwood down towards their half forward line. Hinckley's in front. Well, who wants to play in the finals? It's all about that now. Tudor, inspired, attacked the ball brilliantly. Centres it. Mench is up, and that's a good grab. Is that his first? It is, too. It's his first mark, an important mark, too, for Mench. Off come the gloves for the kick. And that's a very important point. They're talking about the gloves now as an asset when they're marking. It's a problem when they're kicking. Now, <laughs> but it's also a problem when you try to put your boot on. That's why he's got them off. But they're adhesive to the point when you're dropping the ball down to your boot quite often, it will stick slightly. Now you came up with that theory the other day with, with somebody Cook. with Cook, James Cook, James Cook, Cook with the rosin, but he that's has right. rosin on his hands that's too. That's right, same problem. That's why he uses the water. Don't often see them take the gloves off to kick though. Well, I think you have to fix his boots up. You'd want to be you? sure of getting the distance, otherwise it could come back on the rebound quickly and you're gloving up. So here's Midge. <laughs> well, it's his first kick, so we don't know whether he does. This well, he goes purpose. from 40. It's close. It's a goal. This is very important now for the Cats. Collingwood have got to meet the challenge. Yes, and I think they'll come back too. The form is an indication in this game. Geelong started well. That's a great kick. That's his first kick for the game. Mench, he started at centre half forward. He's got the gloves back on. Oh, it's a free kick going Collingwood's way. Too many in the square. McGuan takes it from the circle. Straight to full forward. Bob oh. McCartney. Oh. Right in front, Jason McCartney. Good mark, wasn't it, Don? You liked that, did you? Yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Margin is 11 points in favour of Geelong. McCartney for his fourth goal, which would be the third week in a row here at the MCG. Oh. What a vital miss that could be.
doing better at full forward. It's the best I've seen him play. He's hitting the ball hard. He's giving us something to lead to. Not the time to say that. Here comes Darcy to Tanner. Tanner up towards centre half back. Next goal vitally important. He goes towards the outer side. Barnes the leaper. Monkhorst knocked it away, taken by McGrath. Only gained about 10 metres on the kick. Sharkey fell over. Hotton did nicely, but the hand pass a little untidy. McGuan eventually had to take it. Hassel was run hard and long. Kicks inside the 50. Francis assesses the options. Goes for home, and he's been it back superbly. Fine running goal. And you look over the season, he's not a goal kicking rover. He's kicked only six goals in 14 matches this season. And Hassel once again getting involved, but he's delivered the ball well on the left foot. This is a left foot goal here. He's a very skilled little player, Tony Francis. Very adept on both sides of the body. Margin back to four points. Geelong in front. Couch goes back. Tanner just gets boot the ball, but doesn't clear the area. Williams, well played by Paul Williams. Hoist it high to half forward. Buckley with Hinckley. Buckley marks. Thought about going on. McCartney near the goal square. Oh! oh fantastic mark by Williams. Diving into the space. Well, a Geelong player thought he had that, but Williams came from nowhere. sensational because he was the player who gave it to Buckley in the first pace place and went past to get it back. Buckley's been superb. I mean a half forward flanker with 26 possessions. Remarkable. This to put Collingwood in front. Paul Williams going for a two-point lead. 35, 40 metres out. Just missed it. Can excuse him from wide out there, but Cartney's was a bit more serious. He's kicked three points for the day, Williams. 13-15 to 15-6. What a finish. For the games of the season, this, in standard. And for its competitive nature. Lynch to Tanner. Tanner takes off. Half back, swings it out wide, intended for Couch. He needs to mark it because he's out number three to one. He was buried by Perth. And Couch is slow to get up. Meantime, on the outer side, Williams taken high. And he'll be down for a while, too. I think they might be a report here.
do. That's an interesting decision. Well, it has to be a ball up, surely, if it's not a mark to one or the other. Francis and Hawking having a bit to say. Have you ever heard a crowd go crooked a decision like that? Well, if it's not a mark, it's got oh. to be a ball up for the umpire let them play on. Meantime, play does go on around the other side now. Brown fell over. Couch goes back after the loose ball. And the crowd getting very vocal. For what it's worth, three kicks are 20 all in this game. And the scoreboard's nearly as even. The Cats lead by three points. Montforst started in great fashion. Took plenty of marks early, but not so many lately. Out on the full. The free kick to Shane Watson. We have nine and a quarter minutes to go at the MCG. Both these teams level on 11 wins each for the season. There are seven teams level on 11 wins each. That's how tight it is, and that's how important the Premiership points are today. And the Collingwood fans still hooting that Hotton wasn't paid the mark. The side of Ed's there to the Magpies, thrown in. There's another one, another two. Barnes got it down to Hawking, and this is McGrath. Look at this run. The third in the passage. Oh, long. What was he thinking? Woods got him. Well, Collingwood momentarily out of the woods. This is right, but he missed the ball. Lynch back to Brewer. Brewer just outside the 50. Slips it away, taken by Tudor. Tudor bounces it inside the 50. Ablett's got an opportunity from 35 metres out. Was missed to the left-hand side of behind. That would have been a very handy goal. The lead is out to four points. Harry Ablett's given a strange exhibition of kicking today, I reckon, for a bloke who came in with 103 goals, 60. He's kicked four goals, four today, Ablett. And Paul Williams is back on the ground with a towel, and he's coming around to the interchange gate, which is on the broadcast side of the ground, and we reckon we might see him back. Gary Pert kicks in for the Pies. A mighty kick too. A high climb, no mark. Gary Hockey in front of the pack. His kick smothered. It bounces to Bearstone. 60 metres out. A high ball. Mitch is there. Mark taken by Pert. Plays on to Watson. The play on game in the 90s exemplified here in a sensational display between Geelong and Collingwood here today. Buckley set a wing. Held back by Mansfield. Free kick to Buckley. Advantage goes to Woods. Woods approaches the 50. Tony Woods goes to the goal square. James is there. Nearly marks. Get oh. Collingwood in front by two points. His second, Brett James. But looking at that, I wonder whether his foot was over the line when he made contact. It was very, very close to that line. There's the free kick on Buckley, but it was paid advantage to Woods. Woods had a player on his left, but decided to do it himself. In front was James. Oh, touchy. Oh, I reckon that was dead set a goal. Just inside the line, he kicked it. Couch goes to Mitch, and Mitch takes the mark. Well, Geelong lost the lead. They trailed by two points. Mitch could regain it within 20 seconds. I talked about the play on style of the 90s. The way Gary Perth marked the fullback, hit yeah. the ground running, and set up a goal at the other end. It was just fantastic. Here's Mitch. Oh. And a good kick. The catch back in front. Bomber greats Paul van der Haar and Barry. And Paul Williams, who left the ground with blood streaming from his face, is back less than five minutes later. What a game here at the MCG. Seven and a quarter minutes left. Besto to Barnes, to Hawking, to Brewer, 45 metres out. He was going the short one to Ablett, smothered by Perth, who's been sensational. Now to Watson. What ebb and flow in this game. Fantastic. James up in front, Colbert knocks it away, it's out of bounds, boundary throw in. Just under seven minutes till full time. Nine lead changes in this turn. by Barnes. Cotton tried to feed it out. Barnes again. Tanner. Back goes Couch. Look out! Ooh. Kelly almost got there and that was his intention. 
He took off and he was coming at a million miles an hour. Couch oblivious to that terrific. Kicks in. Oh, Brownless. Brownless, the juggled mark. Billy's got four this afternoon. He'll kick from about 55. When he went for a long bomb in the third quarter, he didn't make the distance down the other end of the ground. He's capable. Lee Matthews looking on. And Malcolm Blight opposing players in two grand finals. Both riding this one out. Brownless unloads. It's a massive kick from behind. Margin five points. That's his first miss. Four goals, one. There's the time remaining. And Pert. This crowd's at fever pitch dance. Well, it's just been a marvellous game. Close, and the standard's superb. Pert. Takes a chance. Can McGuan run onto the ball? Yes, he can. Woods outside him. McGuan releases the ball in timely fashion. Woods has it forward at the wing now. Goes inside the 50, awkward half volley for McCartney. He keeps it in front. He's surrounded, was bumped high. Play goes on. They tie it up, Geelong, and we'll have a ball up. The Paul Couch was laboring there. He's done a lot of running. Geelong leading by five points. Graham Wright, who just came off the ground and was replaced by Williams, who came back after that bleeding. Here's Bairstow. Short of centre wing, punched on by Brewer. Here's Couch. Gets a bad bounce. Down goes McGuan. Great pick up by Hinkley. Chased by Watson. The kick by Hinkley, disappointing. On course marks at centre half back. He didn't waste half a second. Back he goes to Krasiska. Back to the centre of the ground. Brown by Williams. Top mark by Williams. We thought he was gone for the day, but here he is back again. Tries to go the torpedo. A wobbly old kick. McCartney, best over Geelong, fires out the hand pass. Sharkey to Williams again. Perfect kick. Francis marks inside 50. It's on between Hocking and Brown behind play. There he is, Hocking, pushing and shoving. And here's Gary Pert, who's come up from fullback to mark on the 50. And he's giving Gary Ablett a run around at the moment. Hocking being involved in a few of these duels with McGuan earlier. There's McGuan getting involved. But he'll stand up, Hocking. Well, the Cats are him playing football now, of course. Can't get sidetracked. This to put Collingwood in front by a point. Gary Pert, the fullback. Oh, it's not bad, but just offline. A behind. She's played a wonderful last quarter, Gary Pert. Three forty-one to go. Cats lead by four points. Hinkley's taken the mark. Crowded about sixty-five thousand at the MCG. And two of the superstars still battle their way down the ground. There's Will's meantime. Long sleeves and the gloves. Nice look. He's going for distance. Through the wing. Over the top court again. Timely mark. Collingwood come forward. Out wide for James. Colbert arrives on the scene. Took him high. James will get the free. He's got two goals. Plays on quickly. McGuan just outside the 50. The game is hanging by a thread at the moment. Mickey McGuan goes back, has a bit to say, then goes short and Buckley. Perhaps the best kick on the ground inside the 50. He's been superb, Buckley. Well, sometimes he's the best. He can kick at 60, but he can kick at 30. Well, he's got three goals this afternoon. What an important kick for the aspirations of two clubs right here. Nathan Buckley kicks the goal. I think it's good. It is. Collingwood in front. His fourth goal, Nathan Buckley. A 
when it left the boot, he wasn't confident or didn't give any indication that it was going through. Usually players are jubilant. But he is an excellent kick. And what a pressure goal. He must have just got in. Horse palms it down in the middle to McGuan. The pies go forward again. They're out of the centre square. Williams has been spectacular. Here's Francis, though. Left footer will seal the game. But he hooked it back too far. And through it goes for a minor score. The margin now three points. Collingwood in front. And we've got under two minutes left. Dennis, your estimate of the crowd nearly spot on. You said 65,000. I'll give you a bit of latitude. 66,555. Thank you. Midfield, Mansfield throws it on the boot. Important ball here. Brewer surrounded, knocked away by Hassel. Socket off the ground by Hawking. Brewer's got it again. There's Bearstow down towards half forward. Oh, 140 to go. Brewer keeps it alive. Lynch slipped over. Costly, costly. And Woods comes away. Lynch hangs his head. Strong tackle by Tudor. Affected the kick. Mansfield close to the line, takes it across. Clock stops, and they'll regroup here. Buckley, 22 to go. Very, very tired, trying to run down Mansfield, and he's gone. Thrown in on the wing. Hotton knocks it forward. Francis has been very good. Scrambles it to half forward. Wright can't keep it in. Deflected across the line. Good play by Wright. Well, he might be tired, Nathan Buckley, but that kick might nearly win the game. A magnificent goal he's for. Hot and takes clean possession, but it's not all over yet. Bairstow goes off the ground, but no distance. Hassel to Woods. Woods has been a very good player. Inside the 50 with his kick. But oh, can't oh. interferes. A Geelong free kick to come back to Darcy. Gee whiz, that could be an important free kick. 52 seconds to go. Geelong need to go the length of the ground. Can they do it? McGrath's got it. Inside his own defensive 50. They're manned up pretty well down the ground. They'll have to win a one-out contest. He boots oh. it towards half forward. Loose ball. This two knocks it forward. There's a free kick on the other side. It's going to Mench. Two undisciplined free kicks. One by McCartney, the other here. Down to 30 seconds. Needs a mark. Montforst over the top. Waiting behind Perth. The hand pass directed to the boundary. It's out of bounds and will be thrown in. That was by Francisca, that free kick. He's very tired too. There's a lot of tired players out there. They've done some terrific running. And well played again by Gary Perth. Here he goes again. He nearly get in the boat. Oh, his couch! Hand pass back he goes. Bairstow on the 50. A blind kick. Montcourt in front of goal. A chest mark. That should be enough. Eight seconds left. Monkey. He doesn't know it's that close. But the scoreboard shows they're at 29 minutes gone. Terrific game. The Pies up by three points, 15-17 to 16 goals eight. Leading goal scorers Buckley got four, including the clincher at the end. Jason McCartney kicked three, and for the Cats, Ablett kicked four, Brownless four, and Riccardi kicked three goals. Just a terrific game in front of 66,555 at the MCG. The MCG was rocking today.